Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Your favorite, as I always say, political analyst Ezugu Chukudi is here with us right now because he's going to take us through everything that's going on and everything that's happened in the past 24 hours. But, but, okay. So we have a lot of stories to get through. Let's start off with a particular one to do with the Dangote Group. The president and chief executive of the Dangote Group, being Aliko Dangote, on Wednesday said that Nigeria had not taken advantage of its huge population for economic growth, wondering why local content was being relegated while relying on heavy Heavily, heavily, sorry, on the importation of goods and services. Now, he was he was represented by a group executive director and spoke on the topic of industrialization, backward integration as a strategy for national development. And according to him, Nigeria is currently spending over 1.5 trillion naira annually on food importation, stressing that this puts a heavy pressure on foreign reserves. Chukudi, 1.5 trillion naira currently on food importation when we are a naturally resourceful country, rich in agriculture? Really? First and foremost, I would say I'm excited that, I mean, there's an item in the news that is not about defection, distraction, uh, so, so, some sort of, you know, any, anything but not what is happening in Nigeria's political space. Now, Alaji Ali Kodangote has made a very valid point. You cannot rank high up there in population and you do not explore the tremendous potential of the population that you have. We are 198 million people, according to the last um, information put out by the MBS. And we have a, sorry, MPC. And we have a situation where we spend trillion in hard currency to import food into the country. It is, it is an absolute disgrace that in a country that is so blessed with abundant human and natural resources, we still are dependent on what we get from outside the country. And do you know that there is nothing you would cultivate, mm. at least in any part of Nigeria, at least you would find a part of Nigeria where it would, you know, it would blossom. But we have a situation where we cannot see beyond our nose because we have people who are not even fit to be class captains in a very good uh, uh, secondary school presiding over the administrative affairs of state. All we need to do is sit back and look at all the advantages that we have. Do you know that there are countries that have a quota system to get as many people as possible into their country so that they can take advantage? I mean, Canada is one, exactly Australia is one, that. to take advantage of the population. But we have a people who are very intelligent, who are very ingenious, who are very creative, yet we allow our best hands leave the shores of Nigeria. But I mean, beyond food, we also have the manufacturing sector as well. We find that a lot of the things that are being produced or that are being used in Nigeria, their materials, the raw materials are being imported. And that's why you find that when people want to purchase things or clothes, for example, some people would say, oh, I say buy the Naira, buy Naira to grow the Naira. But at the end of the day, you find that homegrown businesses tend to be more expensive or homegrown outfits because they are spending more with regards to light, with regards to infrastructure, raw material, something as simple as cotton. Yeah. Really. Do you know that in Nigeria, the other day my friend and I went hunting for cotton because she wanted to start her, start her own fashion line and we could not get good cotton. And they said, oh, you have to buy the ones that are imported here mm. into Nigeria. As a matter of fact, he even went further and he said it was 80% of inputs in the manufacturing process are actually imported, which means that only 20% are really and truly homegrown. That was what I was even going to say. First, in correcting the mindset, we really need to understand the correct definition of development. Mm. Because, for example, whatever raw material, like you mentioned, you get it from, you might even get some here, take them outside, like we do with our crude, then bring them back as refined. Or you get some, take them outside, process, and bring them here. Then you couple, and we are happy, we are excited. Development is essentially from the creative point where you conceptualize and you put your thoughts, articulate them, codify them, and begin the process. You don't just uh, get the battery and the device and just couple it and say made in Nigeria and we're all excited. That's not development. What we need to do is first, thank God Alaji Ali Kodangote is saying this. You would remember that, you know, for several weeks we discussed what Bill Gates said. Investing in your people we make a lot of mistakes, and the problem is simple. We don't have two heads. We are not useless people, but we just have people who are visionless in government. Because if you have a national policy 
on development. Ah, by this time, by this time, hey, in Nigeria, we'll be flying now. You know, some people even fly. And the fact really. that we actually have a structure and a frame that we can use, provided to us by the United Nations. So many countries are modeling the United Nations SDGs to actually ensure that they give their countries a framework for development. But we're sitting here and we're still having to speak about and complain about certain things that we should have moved way beyond. You know what we always do? We spend time looking at our expectations and not working hard towards attaining them. How many vision? We are, we, I mean, we're young people to the glory of God, but how many vision in our time? Vision 20, 2000, vision, vision 2010, 20, vision 2020. You see, the, you, you, you have visions and you don't embark, or are we rhyme today? You have visions and you don't embark on the mission. A vision without a structure To is actualize just a the vision. Then you're wasting your time because it's useless. So if Alaji Ali Kodangote is saying this now, it's a good thing, I mean... If they will not listen to Ezugutukudi because I'm, I'm, I'm just a boy, Alaji Ali Kodangote, you would listen to him. But I would also like to beg him because he has a lot of influence. In fact, overwhelming influence. If he drops something here now, you know, things, the music can begin to change. Let him use his influence to get these persons to do the right thing. And we just, we don't need you to, I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you get, if you try and do, drop a list of the top 10 best professionals in every sector in the world. I am very certain that you have two Nigerians. Very true indeed. We find that even in our academic sector, we have Nigerians who leave the shores of our country because we can't even afford to pay them. We're finding that other countries are taking our best and our brightest. We're having a great level of brain drain. These are the things we need to cut down. We need to find a way it's to work It's not even on about them. affording to pay them. You want doctor to be doing operation with touch with lights. Touch lights. Okay. You know, eh? I, in fact, I have a friend who, who, who currently, he's doing his page in the UK. Before then, he was working in the UK. And I said, why can't you come back? I mean, you had a first class from OAU, a first class from law school, a first class from Cambridge. Now he's in um, Harvard. And it's like, he says, look, by the time you come back, the truth is they've lived, a lot of them have gotten used to that comfortable lifestyle. And the money they are paying them here, here like the infrastructure, first of all, is not set up to... It's a society that exactly. works. You Let come me just back give to your own country with culture shock. Like, you have culture shock in your own exactly. country. It's scary. Let me give this quick example. Mm. People doing business in Sura. Sura is here. Mm. They went to the, you know, the distribution company to beg them. They were begging. Please, take us, not yank us off. We are going to provide our own power. It has gotten to the point where you have to go to say, please, we don't even want to do it again. Take us off, we'll provide our own power. In Nigeria, it's like you're struggling to survive. Someone said it's very difficult to be in Nigeria, and I quite understand with scenarios like this, you quite understand why someone would say it's difficult to be in Nigeria. We want to look forward to the day where Nigerian will not be their own security provider, will not be their own service provider, pro providing power for themselves, and doing the things that we expect that the government, the basics that we expect that the government should do. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.